Good morning. Our devotional study for today entitled, Enduring to the End, Enduring to the End, Part 1. Please consider subscribing so that you can follow through each day. Wars and rumors of wars are not the sign of the end of the age, but of the beginning of persecution and moral horrors. Now is the time to gather together in the Lord our family members as closely as possible. He who endures to the end shall be saved from spiritual destruction when the deceptions and tribulation come upon the earth. The gentle holocaust is at the door. As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, in Matthew 24, verse 3, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? Our world is becoming spiritually dark. The Western nations are revealing the moral corruption and the chaos of spiritual and material realms that always result when man makes himself God. Soon men's hearts will be failing them for fear because of the tumult and shaking on every side. The disciples ask, When will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming? What will be the sign of the end of the age? The verses that follow portray the events of the future, perhaps of the immediate future. In Matthew 24, verse 4, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Deception has always been a problem for Christians. In the days to come, deception may prove to be an even more serious issue. The Lord commanded us to be careful someone does not deceive us. Given the nature of deception, how are we to keep from being deceived? If we knew when we were deceived, we will not be deceived. First, we must recognize that the strongest among us can be deceived. The believer who thinks that because he reads the Bible and prays he can never be deceived is deceived already. The Lord did not say, be sure that Satan does not deceive you, but rather that no man deceive you. However, deception comes originally from Satan. Satan does not possess the power to force the elect away from Christ. Satan attacks the mind. He convinces us of a lie, and we then enter into one sin or another, thus placing ourselves in Satan's power. In the realm of wisdom, we are no match for the fallen cherub. How then are we to make certain we are not being deceived? Only God can prevent our being deceived. Salvation is of the Lord. No person can keep himself in the truth except as the Lord assists. This is important to understand. Notice the following. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs, with lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 9 through 11. Notice the passages I just quoted is referring to a man, to Antichrist, but that the deceivableness that proceeds from Antichrist is actually the working of Satan. Notice also that if we do not receive the love of the truth, God himself will send delusion upon us. The expression in this passage, the deceivableness of unrighteousness, gives us the key to protection from deception. It is unrighteousness, wickedness, that deceives us. We are living in a world that is under the divine curse because of sin. Man has placed himself under the power of Satan. God has sent Christ so that through him we may escape the, escape the corruption that is in the world because of lust. God has commanded us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We are not to strive for happiness but righteousness. Righteousness is the will of God for us.
We are to deny ourselves, take up our personal cross, and follow the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. As we do this, we achieve right standing before the Lord. Multitudes of believers in our day are not willing to deny themselves. They are not seeking righteousness or God's kingdom first. They are seeking first their own happiness and the happiness of their children. They are attempting to restore paradise to the earth before the curse has been lifted. It is the pursuit of happiness instead of righteousness that makes us vulnerable to de deception. Remaining in the Lord's prison, carrying our cross and following after Christ requires a lifetime of patience accompanied by a considerable amount of tribulation. Satan studies our personality. He sees where our areas of strong desires are. Our areas of strong desire are often the gifts of God to us and are the places in our personality of the greatest danger and also the greatest opportunity for fruitfulness in the kingdom. Satan uses people to present us with an opportunity to gain what we desire fervently. Then he places in our mind the thought that what has been presented is natural, right, and must be of the Lord because it feels so good. In addition, there may be signs and omens that reinforce the idea that this new experience or hope is of the Lord. In addition to the satanic deception that come to individuals, there are several experiences and hopes that have been presented to the Christian churches as a whole. Like the grace of God is an unconditional ticket to eternal residence in paradise. Even though we do not live as a disciple, we shall go to heaven anyway and live in a mansion on a street of gold, experiencing every delight. God is love and not wrath, not consuming fire. God is not to be feared, only reverence. God will rapture his saints before they experience tribulation. God wants the Christians to be rich in this world. The Christians can speak a creative word of faith similar to the words of God in the first chapter of Genesis and thereby get whatever he wants. These this deceptions have been marvelously successful in keeping the elect in a state of perpetual childhood. Because the six errors we, we have just mentioned have resulted in sin and disobedience. The Lord Jesus is removing the lampstand of testimony from the churches. The saints are not working out their own salvation with fear and trembling. The churches are filled with lightness, foolishness, self-will, self-love, bitterness, self-seeking, and sometimes immorality, incest, drunkenness, profanity, and violence. There is much Christian ministry, but the testimony of God, His person, His way, His will, his kingdom has been destroyed. We have been deceived by Satan working through men. Sometimes the people deceiving us are fully persuaded they are fundamental Christians doing the Lord's will. Nevertheless, the damage is done. The great need of the hour is for God's people to turn to Him in confession of sin and sincere repentance. The experienced saint recognizes that the voice that tells him God will never allow him to suffer but wants him to be prosperous and happy in the world is not, is not of the world, of the Lord I mean. When Peter attempted to turn the Lord away from suffering, the Lord commanded, Get behind me, <coughs> Satan. The Lord resisted Satan who was speaking through Peter. He did not let Peter deceive him. This incident teaches us that the voice of Satan can come to us through the most earnest Christian. We must be very cautious when listening to teachings or voices that are telling us something that appeals to us. If there is any doubt at all, we are to resist such teachings and voices, knowing that whatever is of the Lord will withstand constatious resistance and come to pass with power. Doctrine and voices that proceed from the Lord 
do not conflict with the scriptures, can stand up under patient scrutiny, can ordinarily be discussed with other fervent Christians, and are not accompanied by inflamed desires, haste, fear, or a forcing of circumstances. But the wisdom that is from above, James 3.17, is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. The six doctrines mentioned above, unconditional grace that I mentioned a while ago, the unbalanced emphasis on God's love, the teaching we are to reverence the Lord but not fear the Lord, the so-called pre-tribulation rapture of the believers. God wants us to be rich in material things and the use of soulish faith to imagine and obtain whatever we desire are contrary to the scriptures. It is, of course, proper to show reverence toward the Lord, but in the addition, the scriptures teach us the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, Whoever does not fear to displease the Lord is proud and also ignorant of spiritual realities. The six teachings are deceptions, and we are to flee from them. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Matthew 24, verse 5. Throughout church history, and even today, there are various individuals who claim they are Jesus Christ. Sometimes these deceivers organize a call and gain numerous followers, no doubt we shall see many impostors in the future. We know that such are not Christ. Christ is at, at the right hand of God, the Father, in a state of unimaginable glory. There is more power in his little finger than that contained in a galaxy of stars. The pretenders are only flesh and blood people who may be charming and may have some occult power, but compared to the Lord Jesus, they are less significant than ants suckering about in the garbage. The believers of today are far too susceptible to deception. A persuasive individual, male or female, who professes to come in the name of the Lord Jesus, especially one who works in miracles, can engage in any sort of foolishness and still draw crowds of silly, gullible Christian people. The Lord would command us to put to the test every evangelist and teacher before we accept what they have to say. We should compare what they state with the scriptures and also look to see if they personally are righteous and holy of character. How can one get good water out of a poison well? There are many Christian leaders whose prime objective is to wring as much money as they can from the people. They will teach and do anything they think will keep believers coming and giving of their money. It is our responsibility to make certain that what we are listening to is coming from the Lord. If we do not but receive everyone who claims to be speaking in the name of the Lord, we will be judged as being spiritually lazy and negligent. In the day of the Lord, we will not be able to place the blame on the false preacher. The blame is ours because we were not diligent in making certain we were not being deceived. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word for today. Help us, Lord, as you continue to open our eyes, Lord, giving us discernment. So, Lord, today, as we face this day, Lord, help us, Lord, to, to buy the truth and love the truth in you. So we will walk in truth, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, saints. See you tomorrow.